Well, this is most certainly a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship with us here at Calvary. I am Pastor Ben, and it is good to be with each and every one of you. A warm welcome if you are new or visiting with us today. You will find a uh, welcome card in the pew in front of you. If you would like us to have your name or any information about you, please fill that out and leave it in the offering basket. And for anyone who has any uh, information update, contact information, or a new address, you can fill this card out as well and leave it in the offering basket. Everything you need for today's service can be found in a bulletin that you could have picked up on your way in. Everything will also be up on the screen as well. This is the last day of the month for these monthly bulletins, so if you really, really want to take your bulletin home with you today, you are welcome to do so. The only other place uh, you will want to reach today is for that red hymnal in the pew in front of you, so please join us in singing and responding throughout worship today. Today is a special Sunday here at Calvary as we celebrate uh, the baptism of Luca Madsen. We give thanks to God for all that God does in and around our community and in the lives of our young people here. So we will uh, celebrate that uh, midway through the service today. We also hear a story of Jesus telling us that he is the vine and we are the branches, and we wonder what that metaphor means for us in our lives, how we are connected to God and how we are truly dependent on God. And we wonder how that dependency might fly into the face of some of our inclinations of being strong and independent individuals. So listen for themes of vine and branches and uh, our uh, new life in Christ being fully dependent on God as we go throughout service today. With that, I'll invite you to stand as you are comfortable as we begin worship with a thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter, and our joy. Amen. Amen. Look, here is water. Here, here is our water, water of life. Alleluia. Immersed in the promise of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and gave us new life. Through the flood, you led Noah into life and into freedom. Through the Jordan River, or through the Red Sea, you led your people Israel in, out of slavery and into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized, giving new life for all. We give you thanks for this water. For look, here is water. Here, here is, is our, our water, water of life. life. Hallelujah. Let us sing. Christ is risen, alleluia, risen our victorious head. Sing his praises, alleluia, Christ is risen from the dead. Gratefully our hearts adore him as his light once more appears. Bowing down in joy before him, rising up from griefs and tears. Christ is risen, alleluia, risen our victorious head. Sing his praises, alleluia, Christ is risen from the dead. Christ is risen, all the sadness of our land in feast is o'er. Through the open gates of gladness, he returns to life once more. Death and hell before him bending, see him rise, the victor now. Angels on his steps attending, 
glory round his wounded brow. Christ is risen. Christ is risen, all the sorrow that last evening round him lay, now has found a glorious morrow in the rising of today. See the grave, its first fruits giving, springing up from holy ground. Christ was dead, but now is living. He was lost, but he is found. Christ is risen, alleluia, risen our victorious head. Sing his praises, alleluia, Christ is risen from the dead. Christ is risen, henceforth never death or hell shall us enthrall. We are Christ, in him forever we have triumphed over all. All the doubting and dejection of our trembling hearts have ceased. Hail the day of resurrection. Let us rise and keep the feast. Christ is risen. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace. To God's people on earth. Glory to God. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. Glory to God.
For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Amen. We pray. O God, you give us your Son as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we turn to the word. The first reading today is from Acts 8. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to the chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? And he replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer. So he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along down the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found him at Azorus, and he was passing through the region. He proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. The psalm today is Psalm 22. Please respond responsibly. From you comes your, my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, The Lord has acted. The second reading today is from, from 1 John chapter 4. Beloved, let us love one another because of Love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In 
this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this way, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the hearing of the gospel. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. John in the 15th chapter. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Well, grace and peace to you from Jesus who grafts us to the vine so that we may remain connected. Amen. Shortly after I was born, my older sister Kirsten wanted to help my exhausted mother and father so badly. So at four years of age, she started looking around the house for anything at all that she could help with. She noticed in the kitchen a stack of dishes piling up higher and higher. She thought to herself, well, I can wash dishes. So she brought over a chair, climbed up on top of it, and started to load the dishes in the dishwasher. As my mom tells this story, she came into the kitchen to find Kirsten precariously balancing on the chair, leaning over with a plate in her little hand, and my mother rushed forward for fear of a shattering plate, or worse, a shattering daughter. And she uh, came to my sister's aid, and my sister recoiled, looked her dead in the eyes, and said, Mama, I do it myself as any four-year-old might. <laughs> Mama, I do it myself. 
It's kind of the perfect slogan to sum up our highly independent culture, isn't it? I mean, after all, we are all products of our contemporary culture that celebrates independence and is frankly skeptical of any sort of dependency. In fact, often I think we see dependence as some sort of moral weakness. I think of my grandfather refusing to use his cane but carrying it upright like a sword as if he were a knight going into battle. Or the frustration that he had when we had to take his keys away from him because he was no longer safe to drive on his own. And this culture of independence permeates into our conceptions of faith. I accepted Jesus as my savior, some Christians profess. And we tend to put a lot of priority on our individual experiences of faith. It's my prayer life or my personal devotions. And there's nothing wrong with the independence of faith and, and your own personal prayer life or your own uh, uh, devotions. But if we consider the larger Christian community, I think we tend to do it from a consumer mindset. We ask, what do I get out of worship? And we believe and we trust that we are free to join up or free to quit as our personal preference dictates. I bring all of this up not to shame anyone. God knows that I am guilty of prioritizing my own preferences when it comes to faith. This stubborn independence is simply the water we swim in. At times it can be hard to notice and to actually name that water around us because it is the dominant story told in our culture. But today's gospel reading flies in the face and directly challenges our independent notions of faith. I am the vine and you are the branches, Jesus says. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. In other words, Jesus looks straight at us and says, you are solely and completely dependent on me. And if these words aren't blunt enough for you, Jesus has more to say. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. Now, I am not much of a gardener myself. In fact, I'm pretty sure my thumb is more brown than green. Most every plant I've ever attempted to keep inside my house has withered and died under my care. I have become very, very good at cleaning up the withered leaves that have fallen from my dying house plants. And through those delicate plant remains, I understand the image that Jesus is evoking here. Apart from the vine, there is nothing to sustain the leaves. So they become brittle to the touch and dangerously flammable. There's no story behind that. It's just a constant fear of mine when I see those leaves on my floor. When we are disconnected from Christ, we too can become brittle and dangerously flammable, recoiling in hostility at the slightest indication that we need help. We blow up at anyone who dares recognize our vulnerability. I do it myself, Mama, lives in each and every one of us. Or as my daughter likes to say to me, leave me alone. Though there was this one plant in our house a couple years ago that seemed to endure my so-called care. It was a heartleaf philodendron, I believe. And it grew and grew and grew, and the vine tangled itself with the surrounding bookshelf to the point where I don't think we could have moved it even if we had tried. It became jumbled and interwoven mess of a plant, but it thrived. 
This, too, is the image that Jesus is evoking. The spiritual life of a Christian is meant to be tangled up together, a jumble of interwoven individuals who make up the body of Christ. In this metaphor, dependence is not a matter of personal morality. It is a matter of life and death. Branches that refuse to cling to the vine die. Branches that remain grafted to the vine thrive. Why? Because Christ is the very source and sustainer of our lives. He is not just a wise teacher, a good role model, or even the most brilliant community organizer. Jesus is the wellspring of life that persists even, in the, even amid the clutches of death. The crucified and risen Christ grafts us to his very self so that we too may have life abundantly. The fruit we bear then is not what we produce, but what Christ produces through our connection, through our very dependency on him. God is the vine grower who is far more talented than I am at keeping plants alive. Jesus is the vine that produces the fruit, and we branches, we have one task and one task alone, to abide, to stay connected, to remain, to cling to the vine that nourishes us. It sounds passive on one hand because it is. There's not a lot for us to truly do when we are abiding, when we are remaining. But on the other hand, it is active. Because to stay rooted in a place means to allow the Holy Spirit to cause us to grow, to change, and to multiply. Life springs forth from that place. And sure, we will get pruned. We will have to coexist with the messy entanglement with other branches. But the promise is that we will bear fruit. This is what Christ promises to us throughout the season of Easter and throughout the rest of the year. This is what we are made for, to trust the vine to which we cling, for our vine is true. And our vine grower is skilled. Thanks be to God. That Easter day with joy was bright. The sun shone out with fairer light when to their longing eyes restored, the apostles saw their risen Lord. O oh, Jesus, King of gentleness, with constant love our hearts profess to you our lips will ever raise the tribute of our grateful praise O oh christ you are the lord of all in this our easter festival for you will be our strength and shield from every weapon death can yield. All praise, O risen Lord, we give to you, once dead but now alive, to God the Father, equal praise, and God the Spirit, now we raise. God.
God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Dear ones, you may be seated. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Called by the Holy Spirit and trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your child baptized into Christ? If so, please respond, I do. As you bring your child to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, to bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture him in faith and prayer so that your ch child may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help your child grow in the, faith, in the Christian faith and life? If so, please respond, I do. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture this child in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, please respond, I do. And people of God, do you promise to support Luca and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If so, please respond, we do. We do. I love that part. <laughs> I ask you then, all of you, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, please respond, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Can I get a volunteer from the congregation to come up and hold my binder for me? I forgot to ask someone early. Oh, Grandma's gonna come up, thank you. <laughs> you certainly do not have to, you're in the front row. <laughs> what am I doing though? <laughs> Can I take Luca now? Come here, my guy. I got you, I got you. You're gonna make me do this left-handed, huh? That's okay, I can do it. Luca, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You look very confused. <laughs> oh, dear one. Let us proclaim. 
You belong to Christ, in whom you have been baptized. Hallelujah. And Luca, back to you so I can get you a couple things. There you are, my guy. Your head's wet. Here's a little cloth for you. Thank you. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth cleanse them from sin, and raise them etern to eternal life. Sustain Luca with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Luca, child of God, you have been marked by the Holy Spirit and marked by the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Sponsors, I'm going to give you a lit candle. Who can I trust the most? <laughs> Immediately raises her hand. <laughs> Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We, we welcome, welcome you into, into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join, Join us, us in, in giving, giving thanks and, and praise to God, God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. We'll now continue with the prayer, so I invite you, dear ones, to stand as you are able. Dear ones, rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. We pray for the church around the world, for all ministers uh, and for the mission of the gospel. Keep all the newly baptized and confirmed in your care. Cleanse our hearts with your word and help us to abide in you always. God of grace, Hear our prayer. For the nations and all those in authority, for local, state, and national leaders, for elected representatives at every level, and for international organizations that justice and peace may reign, God of grace, hear our prayer. For all those in need, for any experiencing homelessness or unemployment, for those fleeing from oppression or seeking asylum, and for all who are ill or suffering. God of grace, hear our prayer. For this congregation, for the caring ministries of this faith community and for all who visit and minister to one another, for all who take communion to homes or care centers, and for all who seek to share your love with the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. With thanksgiving for the saints who rest from their labors, Help us, like them, to bear much fruit and become your disciples. And at the last, bring us to the heavenly banquet where all will feast together at your table. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. And the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of peace with one another.
thank you all so much for the gifts that you give to this community. Without you and your generosity, we could not do the mission and ministry that we all have been called to. So thank you. We now receive that offering in prayer, so I invite you to stand as you are comfortable. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. And the Lord be with you. With you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. He gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it to all to drink, saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated to receive a couple instructions for communion as our communion volunteers come forward. You'll be welcomed by an usher to come forward to one of three stations where you will receive a wafer. You will then receive a small cup uh, with uh, the wine or juice in it. At the end of each station is a little receptacle for those uh, little cups. You may consume each as you receive them. There are gluten-free and alcohol-free options available for all are welcome at this table. If you wish to come forward but not receive communion, just let us know and we are happy to give you a blessing instead. And if you have any mobility concerns whatsoever, just let the ushers know, they will let us know, and we will come to you. This table is set for all, so come, taste and see that the Lord is good. Come. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace, grant us peace.
Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. Let us drink wine together on our knees. Let us drink wine together on our knees. When I fall on my knees, with my face to the rising sun, O Lord, have mercy on me. Let us praise God together on our knees. Let us praise God together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. I invite you to stand as you are comfortable. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray together. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer. As we go from this place, we carry with us these words of God's blessing. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. We sing. Alleluia, sing to Jesus, is the scepter, is the throne. Alleluia, is the triumph, is the victory alone. Hark the songs of peaceful Zion, Thunder like a mighty flood, Jesus out of every nation has redeemed us by his blood. Alleluia, bread of heaven, here on earth our food, our stay. Alleluia, hear 
the sinful flee to you from day to day. Intercessor, friend of sinners, earth redeemer, hear our plea. Hear the songs of all the sinless sweep across the crystal sea. Alleluia, King eternal, Lord omnipotent we own. Alleluia, born of Mary, earth your footstool and your throne. As within the veil you entered, robed in flesh our great high priest, here on earth, both priest and victim, in the Eucharistic feast. Alleluia. Go in peace, rejoice, and be glad. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.